So, everyone should be able to draw that now. Yes? How does one do that? The question part goes where? On the outside. It doesn't have to be pretty. Right? Everyone's good? And what's the answer? Yeah. X squared minus 3x three. Minus three plus, two. plus 2. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah show you betcha. Yeah. Gouda, gouda, everybody gouda. Okay. I want to only look at a couple of these and then I'm going to leave the rest as part of your assignment that goes to the next page. Cool? Okay. This one I want to look at because for some strange reason, high school students seem to think that when a unit ends, they no longer need that information. Which is, of course, silly. This question, you need everything that you have ever known about distribution. So the two works with what? The four to get? Eight. And the x works with the x to get what? X squared. You cannot forget your exponent laws just because we've done the exponent unit. Minus. Yeah. What do you need to know? Uh, they should be fine, except for one ball of carrying that needs to be set up. Otherwise, the small one, the front shift is broken. It's broken? It's broken. Because the cable will see, so if you just keep cranking on it, it'll break the shifter. Oh, okay. But if you just remove the shifter and such, then you can set up the one that gears in front and should work better. So, if I take that shifter off? Well, I can do that down. Yeah. If you can take the shifter off and maybe put it on the middle? Yeah, exactly. For her? And then do I need a new cable or a new shifter? Uh, both? The shifters you come with the new inner cable. Okay. And can I buy those grip shifters somewhere or do I got to get her? They're pretty cheap. Yeah? Okay. So if I get a grip shifter, you can put it on? Uh, I think they're going up from work. Can you? I'll pay you. On Tuesday. Like yeah. Pick it up. I'll pay you and add 10% for your time. Okay. That's good. Two goes to three to get six and x goes to x squared to get what? x cubed. Is that technically written correctly? No, why? x cubed should be first, right? The higher degree. So this would technically be negative six x cubed plus eight x squared. Technically. I do not, as I said yesterday, I have never seen then give you both of those on a provincial and make you choose that one. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, I'm not going to worry about B. That is going to be part of your assignment. I'm not going to worry about C. That's going to be part of your assignment. We just talked about D. But I am going to talk about E and F. Okay? E, there was a lot of E uh, on... There was some of E on page 186, Yes? That's just triple distribution, right? So this 2 goes where? The Y. The Y, the then the 4, then the 1. So I'm going to have 2Y squared minus 8Y plus 2, yes? And then the way I liked to do this when I was your age was I then did this one. Negative Y cubed. There's no y cubes here, so I put it out there. Negative times negative is positive 4y squared minus y. Then I collect my like terms. Negative y cubed plus 6y squared minus 9y plus 2. And then I'm done. Do you need to draw the arrows? Of course not. Does it help? Maybe. Do you think I draw the arrows when I'm doing this? No. I do it for you guys. Now this one is slightly problematic because it's very similar to the x plus 2 squared, yes? But what is happening? 
This is x minus 3 how many times? 3 times. Now, there is a shortcut to how to do this, but I never, ever use it because you got to keep a lot of stuff in your head. Okay? I use the other shortcut once. Do you understand? Here's what I mean. I don't touch the first one. I leave that as x minus 3. And then I run binomial, binomial through my little shortcut, which is x squared minus 6x plus 9. Yes? Because negative 3 and negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Then I do that. Cool? Everybody good? Don't graduate from school on a Friday. So, we all good? Do I need to run this? Or can I leave it there with those other three questions? Everyone is good? I will run it. All you needed to do was ask. X cubed. Boom. Minus 6x squared plus 9x. New term, new line. Negative 3x squared. Keep the x squareds together. Negative 3 times negative 6. Positive 18x. Keep the x's together. Negative 3 times 9. Negative 27. x cubed minus 9x squared plus 27x minus 27. Now, you guys are smart kids. You could probably figure out the shortcut if you wanted to waste your time figuring out the shortcut. Everybody good? I skip the next page of assignment two. That is going to be your, part of your homework. Your guys' next thing should be, if I'm not mistaken, factoring polynomials. And it should be the bomb font. Is it? Excellent. Yeah, I don't know why it's called bomb font. I didn't make it. But that is what it is called. Yeah? Okay, everybody good? That's where we are. Okay, now, this right here is already simplified. Why? Sure. Yeah, because it's broken down into two factors, right? It's a 4, and then it's an x minus 5. So this is already simplified. into two factors. So what we are going to do is we are going to expand it. And that means multiply the factors together. You guys already know how to do that. What's the answer? I lie. Don't tell me the answer yet. What are you going to do to find me the answer? Write down what you do in your head. You follow me? Because you all know the answer. Write down what you're thinking to find the answer. What is the first thing that we get? 4x, which means what? 4 times x, yes? And then... Plus 4 times what? Negative 5. 
Now write down the answer. What is it? 4x minus 20. 4x minus 20. It's not really minus 20. It's plus negative 20, but math guys are lazy. Everybody cool? Right? We can all do that, yeah? Okay. So this is my expanded form. Now in math, obviously expanding is multiplying. Well, simplifying is breaking it down into factors, right? So when we go the other way, simplified means we are also factoring, which we already know how to do a bit of because we've done GCF and radicals. And to do factoring, what math operation must I be doing? Division. This is dividing to find factors. Everybody cool? Now you guys are smart kids. What am I dividing out of here when I go back to my factors? Five? Four. Right? Why? Why is it four? Four ends up being the coefficient. Pardon? We do not need x by itself because we don't have an equal sign. Because it's a factor of 20 and it's a factor of 4. As a matter of fact, it is what very special factor of 4 and 20? The greatest common factor, which we did last unit. Everybody with me? Okay. So now, let's see how we're doing here. Okay? To do this, you already have the shortcut. It should take you about three seconds to tell me this answer. What is it? x squared plus 6x plus 8. Great. Now, you think to yourself, you say self. This is expanding, isn't it? Which means it's multiplying, yes? So over here in this space, I want you to write all the multiplications you needed to do to make this answer happen. So everything that I had to multiply. What was the first thing? X times X. X times X. What was the second thing? X times two. Third thing? Four times X. Four times X or X times four. And last thing? Four times two. Four times two. Everybody can do this, yes? In their sleep. Agreed? Okay. Keep this in your head and keep this shortcut in your head. The next thing I would like for you to do for me is factor 12. Now, last unit factoring meant prime factors, yes? And it was 2 times 2 times 3. Cool? How did we find 2 times 2 times 3? Factor tree. Factor tree. We just divided and divided and divided until we had them all, yeah? Okay. In this unit, Okay? Factoring 12 means writing all the factors. Okay? And it means writing them in pairs. So, here is what I mean. What are two numbers what are the integer pairs of factors so give me two integers that multiply to positive 12 two. 1 times 12 what's the next one two. 2 times 6 and what's the next one 3 times 4 are those all of them no. 
Why? Because there's negatives. Negative 1 times negative 12 is positive 12, which is perfectly acceptable, yes? So I'm going to put plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 12. But they have to be the same, don't they? Right? Plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus. Is everybody cool with what we have to multiply, finding pairs of factors, and understanding that expansion and factoring are just reverses of each other? Is everyone okay with those three concepts? Yeah? All right. So let's do some work with that. So, as usual, we are not going to do concretely. We're going to go straight to the pictures. Factor this. Now, what that means is I need to split it into pairs, yes? Okay. So, since it's a binomial, it must break down into... Well, it doesn't. If it's going to break down, it's going to break down into monomials. There's going to be a monomial factor, yes? Okay? So I got to look at this and I got to say to myself, okay, I got two terms here. I got 6x and I got 3. Now, if I'm going to make the picture, it's got to be a rectangle, doesn't it? Right? In all the pictures we've done, we've always had a rectangle. Yeah, so I've got to make a rectangle. I know I've got to break down 6x into a rectangle, right? If I was to draw 6x, and I don't want you to draw it yet, just think to yourself how you would go about drawing it. How many bars, oh, I should have done that red. How many bars will we need? Six. And those six bars will have to be in a rectangle, won't they? Right? So think to yourself, what are the only two ways you can put those bars in a rectangle? What would that rectangle look like? Does everybody have it in their head somewhere? Think back to the way Mrs. Bad Crumble taught you to multiply. Does everybody have it? Would anybody like to volunteer what they think is it? What are the two ways I can draw 6 as a rectangle? Remember, a rectangle is got a length and width. And where would the 6 be? That's the area. So what are the two ways I can draw it? Joel has just done one of them. So what did you draw, Joel? A chocolate bar. Yeah. yeah, he drew a chocolate bar. You could go two by three, couldn't you? Everyone agree? Uh -huh. What's the other way you could do it? Okay. Kirby, six by one, right? I'm not going to draw six by one because it's wrong. What is just, and I'll show you why in a sec. Actually, I better draw six by one. Uh, one, two, three, uh, six. Everybody cool? Now, if we were doing algebra tiles, it would be right? Or six of them in a row. Everyone cool? Okay. Now, what are the only ways I can draw three as a rectangle? Three by one, yeah? So this one has to be three Oh, that was drawn poorly. Three by one, yeah? And an algebra tile, since it's a constant, it would be this. Everybody cool? Yeah? Picking up what I'm putting down, reading my mail, mowing my lawn? Yeah? Okay, now I have to take these guys and these guys and somehow create a rectangle. How would you do it? Perfect. Um, you add the three 
I can bring these three down here and I would have one long rectangle, wouldn't I? Which would be 6x. It would look like this. This is one option. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three. Do we agree that that makes a rectangle? Sure. What's on this side? 6x plus 3, yes? And what's on this side? 1. 1. Did I... Now, what would the question be? The question's on the outside. This gives me 1 times 6x plus 3, doesn't it? Yeah. Isn't that what we started with? Yeah. So we don't want that, do we? We want to simplify, right? We want to break it down. So that one's not going to work. So... I got to use 3 and 3, or 6 and 3. So how can I do that so I can make a rectangle? Can these three move to here? Does that make a rectangle? No. You can quite plainly see it doesn't. It makes a meat cleaver. Right? So that's out. Okay. So what are our options? This guy can also be vertical, yes? So could I go this way? No, because that makes a flag. Hmm. So neither way I can manipulate three will help. Can I manipulate this guy differently? How? How can I use six blocks to make a rectangle? Kobe. Can I put this three up here? Okay. So what would I have on this side? One, two, three. Right? And what would I have up top? Doesn't work, does it? But you're getting closer. You could add in zero pairs, but you don't need to. I'm going to say it again. Is there another way to rotate to... to yes? There we go. One, two, three... One, two, three. One, two, three. Now do I have a pretty rectangle? Yeah. Great. And what is it? So what is the factors? Three on one side times what? Two X. Two X plus one. Everybody good? Everybody good? Now, if I expand this, I get my 6x plus 3, correct? Picking up what I'm putting down? Now, you guys are smart kids. Right? Remember I told you to keep these three things in your head. Expanding is multiplying. Factoring is dividing, yes? Please look and tell me what the connection is between 3, 2, 1, and 6, and 3. It multiplies to get this, doesn't it? Which means what do I do to this to get this? Divide by what? 3. Why 3? Because that's the greatest common factor. Everybody with me? So now that we've done this with algebra tiles, we are now, of course, going to not use them anymore. We're going to do it mathematically. Okay? Don't turn the page over yet. We're still, we haven't done it yet. Okay? So, we start with 6x plus 3. 
Step one, decide on GCF. What is it? Three. Cool? Step two, divide all terms by the GCF. So what is, we're going to divide by three, we're going to divide by three. And step three, we write our answer. Our answer is the GCF, then a bracket, and then your quotients. What's a quotient? The, the answer in division. The answer in a multiplication is a product, the answer, right? Okay, so let's show you what I mean. Do we have our GCF? Three, yes. Have we divided by it? Yes. So the last step is we write it as GCF three bracket. What is this quotient? Six divided by three is two. The X's don't change. Plus three divided by three is one. Does everybody see that? You cool? Okay. This is called GCF factoring. And it is always the first attempt. You always try to GCF every polynomial you see. Always. When? Always. always. What if you're in grade 11 pre-calc? Always. What if you're in IB year 1? Always. What if you're in calculus 300? Always. Always. What are you going to do every time you see a polynomial? Always. Attempt to GC. <laughs> what do you put in a toaster? Toast. Okay. I know it's bread. That's the joke. What do you call a spirit that haunts you? A ghost. What do you call somebody who brags all the time? He boasts. What do you put in a toaster? Toast. No. It's a joke. All right. Here we go. Try this with pictures. So, what are the only ways I can break up 4x squared? What's it look like? Well, I need four big blocks, yeah? What are the only ways I can break it up? Two and two, or one and four, right? Okay, so we're covered. We know this side, our four x's squared, have to be two by two, or four by one, right? Everybody cool? Now, what about six? Six x has to be what? We just did it. Just did 6x. 3 by 2 or 6 by 1, yeah? So it's either 3 by 2 or vertically or 6 by 1, yeah? Right? Which of these guys can go together? This guy and this guy, yes? Everyone agree? Yeah. Okay, so we know this will make a rectangle, won't it? Right? Because you can quite blandly see it will. But now we've got to make it look right with algebra tiles. So we start with our 4x. That's 4x squared, yeah? Now, I know I need 3 and 2, right? So, do I need 3 and 2 like this? Will that work? Or does it need to be like this? The vertical or the horizontal? The vertical or the horizontal? Horizontal. 
horizontal. Does that work? No, what is it? The other one. It's got to be the vertical one, right? Because that is going to keep that length. Yeah? Right? Now, if I do it this way, will it work? Yes or no? No, because then I'll have a tail down here, won't I? So I got to put it here. Everybody cool? Yeah. And now, what is our factors? What's on this side? 2x. And what's on this side? 2x plus 3. Correct? Now, let's do it algebraically. 4x squared plus 6x. Step 1. GCF, what is it? Two. Wrong. 2x. Step 2. Divide. Step three, write it. GCF bracket quotients. So, 2x comes out. 4 divided by 2 is 2. x squared divided by x is x. Plus 6 divided by 2 is 3. x is cancel. Everybody good? Everyone good? Okay, now, stop and think. You are not going to write. Everyone is going to look on the screen, and all you are going to do is think. Okay? Everybody ready to think? Okay. What's the GCF? Six. Good. What's the GCF? Six. 6x. Good. What's the GCF? 6x squared. Oh, you guys. Stop it. What's the GCF? 6x. squared. Why, Supreet? Because that is the first one that everybody didn't say it. That is the first one that I could see gears turning. Why is that the GCF? Nine times four, seven times four, so it has to be four. Cool. Why is it only X? There's two, there's X squared there, but this guy only has one to give, doesn't he? So that's x, excellent, and that guy's got squared, he's got two y's, this guy's got three y's, so we can get two of them out of there. Everybody cool? Now, does this pattern continue? Right? Even if I have a 95 term polynomial. Can I still GCF it? Yes. Let's see. GCF that in your heads. Find the GCF. That's always step one. What is it? Four. What letters? X. No, just do the letters first. X. Y. Y. Z. Now do numbers. 
But there's no other M's. Oh. No other M's. Now do the numbers. Just X. Just X. Why? Because the 16 is not have Because 16 only has one X to give. Now what? Y2. Y squared. Why? Because... Because 16 and 24 only have a squared to give. Then what? Five. 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 Because 16 only has a five to give. Now what? That's You've got your GCF. Now what? Divide. Divide everything. Again, you're doing it in your head. <laughs> so, we are going to write our final answer as GCF, which we have. Now, in your head. Where math is done. 3x squared, y7, z2. Nice. Plus 4. Just 4. Why? x, y squared, z to the fifth. x, y squared, z to the fifth. Nice. And finally. bracket. Everybody good? Okay. Now I just forced you to do that in your head without writing it down. Was it difficult? Not particularly. It's hard to keep it all in your line. Right? Which should prove to you that if you write it down in your tests, you'll do perfectly. Right? He said smilingly, Okay, back to your notes. Now you're going to be writing some more. Actually, yeah, we're going to do one more, I think. Yep. Just let me check your outline, make sure I've got my head screwed on right. Mm, I do, kind of. I know. Okay. Look at this situation, and let's see if you can figure it out. Remember, I need a rectangle. Now, you guys are smart kids. That's a trinomial, yeah? Right? Everyone agree? Yeah. Okay. Is that expanded? Yes, because I'm telling you to factor it. Okay, which means I need to break it down. Now, you guys are smart kids. What happened way back here in our notes when we took a trinomial and broke it down? We got two binomials, yeah? So, and we were able to put that in a picture, weren't we? Right? So let's see if we can put this in a picture. It starts with an x squared. Everyone agree? Mm -hmm. Great. So what's, is this answer or question? Answer. answer. So it's the middle of the rectangle, yeah? So let's draw our rectangle. And we know we need an x squared, don't we? So let's draw it. How many do we need? One. So right away we've got the first part of our question, don't we? Yeah? Now, let's think for a minute. Factoring is the reverse of expansion, yes? And expansion requires us to be first outside, inside, last, correct? Right? So if we're reversing order, when we do foil, what's the last thing we do? Last, we do the right-hand term and the right-hand term, correct? So if we're reversing direction, what's the first thing we should attack? The last term, which is this 7, yeah? And I need that 7 to be in what shape? It's got to make a rectangle, doesn't it? What are my only options? 1 times 7, because it's prime number, yeah? So I either 
have to have six, seven, or a vertical one, don't I? Everybody with me? Okay. All right. So I know I've got seven here, yeah? Which means, how many spaces do I have to fill here? I have to fill seven. How wide are they? One. How long are they? Not one. X. So I need seven in there, don't I? Does that keep me a nice rectangle? Kind of. What do I need to fill in this hole? A bar the other way, yeah? Now, do I have my x squared? Yeah. Do I have my positive 7? Yeah. Negative 8. X's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8? But they're not negative, so what do I do? Color them, Color them in. what's on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they're all colored, yeah? And what's here? Oh, there we are. Oh, it froze? Yeah. Okay. What's here? A negative what? One. Now, does that work? Great, so what is the factored version of this? What's on the outside of the rectangle? X minus 1 and minus 7. Now if I FOIL that, what do I get? What's negative 1 minus 7? Negative 8. What's negative 1 times negative 7? Plus 7. Positive 7. Everyone see how to do it? Yeah. With a picture? You just make a rectangle. Right? Now, look at this. This thing that we just factored. Look at the other thing we just factored, right above it, and tell me what are the differences. What is different down at the bottom here? What are my differences? There's no GCF. Okay, so there's no GCF. That's one difference. Second difference, what is that? That's a trinomial. Any other differences? Look at the 7. What? I'm sorry, Pevin. Yeah, it's a constant. 7 is constant. Okay? Everybody good? Everyone sees those differences? Everyone understands the picture? Everyone remembers that factoring is the reverse of flow? Okay, now it's time for the shortcut. Not the shortcut, what you're actually going to do. x squared, right? Minus 8x plus 7. If I am going to FOIL my factors, what was the shortcut again? I added negative 1 and negative 7, and I multiplied negative 1 and negative 7, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what do you recognize about negative 1? Come on! Oh! You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Excellent. What do you know about negative 1 and negative 7 when you add and when you multiply them? You know it's going to make this, yes? Right? So when I look at this trinomial, I know that if I FOIL it, 
I need to have two numbers that will multiply to 7. Correct? And I need two numbers that will do what? Add to what? Negative 8. So I say to myself, self, what are those numbers? Well, the factors of 7 are only 1 and 7, aren't they? How can I make 1 and 7 multiply together to positive 7 and add to negative 8? It has to be minus and minus, doesn't it? And then I write it out as x minus 1, x minus 7. Okay? So the shortcut here, which is the second kind of factoring, to trinomial factoring, is this. 1. You need two integers that multiply to the constant. Those integers must add to the linear term. Now, I gave you guys that word yesterday, didn't I? Didn't I? Okay, the linear term is the variable with no square. Okay, and then three, we write it as x plus or minus integer one and x plus or minus integer 2. Does everybody see how it is done? Yes? It's a lot to take in today. I'm not going to give you anything to take home with you. Okay? Is everybody good? Yes? Okay. So now, all I want you to do again is think. Because this worked really well ten, 10 minutes ago. We're letting you off the hook. There's not going to be any more work. All you got to do is think. Everybody ready? Okay. Oh, I lie. You have a bit of homework. You have that one page. Right? It's what we did yesterday. You just got that. So. What do I need to factor that? Six and two. Why is it 6 and 2? Six six two right. Two. I need to multiply to 12, add to 8, and Joel says it's 6 and 2. And then I write it out as x, they're both positive, plus 6, x plus 2. See how easy this is? It's really easy to do algebraically, isn't it? Doing it with a picture is actually harder. Okay? What do I need for that one? Oh, sure, Pavi. Because when we foil, we know our last step has to be those two numbers. So when we're going backwards, we got to deal with that 12 first. Right? So, what do I got to deal with here first? Multiply to what? 40 and add to what? Negative 14. What is it? Negative 10 and negative 4. And then how do we write the final answer? Minus 10. X minus 4. Super easy, yeah? Okay. What's different? What do I got to multiply to? Negative 30 and add to what? 7. What is it?
Yep, say it loud. Say it proud. Negative 3 and 10. Now, here's where it starts to get tricky, because they're not the same anymore, is it? So, is it negative 3 and 10, or is it 10 and negative 3? Or does it matter? Doesn't matter, does it? Negative 3 plus 10 is 7, negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. Cool, doesn't matter, does it? Okay. multiply to? Negative 45. And what do I got to add to? Negative 12. What is it? It's a big number. It's hard to do in your head, isn't it? Because I'm being mean and not letting you write it down. Can it be 1 in 45? No, because that can't get me to 12. Right? Can it be 9 and 5? That can't get me to 12. Can it be 3 and 15? Can that get me to 12 in some way? But it needs to get me to negative 12, doesn't it? So what are my two options? It can be negative 3. Can it be negative 3? No, it can't, can it? Because negative 3 plus 15 is positive 12. So what must it be? Positive 3 and negative 15. And then we write it. X plus 3, X minus 15. 3 minus 15, negative 12. 3 times 15, negative 45. Can everybody do it? Great. I'm not going to make you do it on your own until after the weekend. Cool? Cool. We've got 10 minutes left with which to do that one page and those two other questions. Three yep. questions. There's one, two, three questions on polynomial multiplication and then this whole assignment. This one we're marking for marks on Monday. That's it? Okay. Okay.